Good evening, dear friends all around the world. My name is Xiomara Mayo Ingram. And like every Thursday, here we are with our Emotional Cafe Live session. Tonight with the topic, freedom from attachments. And as we usually do before we start, I want to remind you that we are inviting everybody to come along and join us in this virtual platform that is yours. Emotional Cafe, it's yours and it's for you. And let your friends know, your family members know that this is something that they can do totally free. They can also catch with past presentations that we always have uploaded on video. So if by any chance they have missed the live session, then they can catch up later. Um, this is a live session, as I said, and you can interact with me using the chat. All you need to do is ask your question, it's totally anonymously, and I will be able to answer your question on real time. Also, I want to remind you that this last weekend we sent out the Emotional Cafe um, newsletter for the month of May. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's really easy. It's also free and all you need to do is go to our webpage and click on the subscription link on the newsletter and simply put your email address. You will be receiving a confirmation email and once you click on the link, you're all set to go. So make sure that you get the newsletter with amazing articles and quotes and the subscribers corner so you can benefit from it and you can also share with other friends as well. And finally, I want to remind you that our webpage is constantly changing. We're always uploading um, different articles. So take some time every once in a while to go and check it out follow us on social media we are so so happy that we've gotten our um, thousand likes already so keep following us because there will be lots of surprises coming along and <clears throat> many interesting things that we will continue posting for you and with that said let's start with freedom from attachments now what i like about this session um, when i was working on the content i was trying to find different um, attachments that we simply um, tend to have in common all of us um, at some point or another um, there might be some that I'm leaving out, but at least I found five categories that are the ones that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight from a very, very um, good perspective. And as usual, at the end of the session, I will be giving you recommendations for each one of those attachments and how you can deal with them, how you can actually detach from them or recover from them. So let's define attachment as a way to start off tonight. You know that we can define attachment simply as a strong bond, a strong emotional bond holding on to something. It can be something or someone clinging, depending on. And we as humans, we get, um, as I say, we tend to attach to different kind of things. We attach to people, we attach to things, we attach to beliefs, um, we attach to um, routines simply as washing our hands or doing something right before we eat or right before we go to sleep. Um, we attach to experiences and we try to reproduce them. We attach to activities and in the extreme case some of those can become a real problem. It can just get worse and worse and worse to the point that has a negative impact in the different areas of our life and that's what we find as addiction. So emotional attachment, it's pretty much like imagining a huge wall in our minds. It's like a big block that just um, throw us to this big hole, like a big pit, and we cannot get out of there. And we don't see a way in which we can move forward, but at the same time, it's hard for us to recognize what is that is holding us back. So by identifying our emotional attachments, we will be able to um, at least make the decision to break free and start putting the actions that we need. Um, definitely by just deciding it, it doesn't mean that we're going to be able to do it. There will be actions that will, will be needed that we take in order to break completely free. So let's let's compare emotional attachments. Let's compare any time of any kind of attachments with having invisible ropes, invisible ties that don't let us move. That's pretty much what happens with attachment. They just paralyze us and they don't let us move. So the five attachments that I am going to share with you are addictions, 
emotional dependency or codependency, which is the dependency of another person, dependency to money or power, the need of external validation and recognition, and attachment to our behaviors, attitudes, and toxic emotions. Those are the ones that we're going to be seeing tonight. And I'm going to start right away with addictions. You might find another complete presentation on addictions, which it's really wide. But tonight, I'm just going to go over specific things that I want to share about addictions with you. And the first one is that there's a huge um, common misconception, which is to believe that an addict is someone that is sleeping on a bench in a park or on the streets or with no family, no money, no jobs or anything and that is always dirty, filthy and simply you see them begging for some money out there. When the truth is that addiction is a physical and psycho-emotional disease that creates a need of dependency um, of a substance, it can be alcohol or alcohol or other drugs, or activity or relationship due to the level of satisfaction that it causes on the individual to the point that it becomes a compulsion and interferes with our everyday activities, responsibilities, interpersonal relationships, and even our own health. So addiction is a persistent compulsive dependence on a behavior or a substance. And I always make and um, make the reference of two big types of addictions. Um, we have the psychoactive substances, which is the addiction to substances like alcohol or any other drugs. And when I say drugs, I don't want you to think only on those drugs that are illegal. I also want you to think about those prescribed drugs, drugs that are prescribed by our doctors or um, simple as sleeping pills or tranquilizers or something to slow our anxiety. Those are legal drugs, but at the same time, they're psychoactive. So as we can abuse them, we can also become very dependent on those. And there's also the process addiction, which is the behavioral type in which a person does not use any substance and they live their, their lives are negatively impacted by the dysfunctional pattern of behavior impacting their whole global functioning as well as their interpersonal relationships. So with the process addictions, which is the behavioral, that's when we find activities that we find people that constantly are looking and seeking for this activity in order to feel better or feel relief. Now, there are 10 most common addictions that I want to share with you because sometimes we tend to believe that a specific activities does not fall into that category and it's just amazing this is based on research and the 10 most common addictions in, include some activities that are considered totally harmless and yet they can be very negative for some individuals so let's look at the list of the 10 most common addictions so just in case that you have any doubt you can actually identify them the first one and you know, it's not as strange to find that it's alcohol. And since alcohol is legal, people don't consider it a drug. People don't consider it an addiction when the truth is that um, alcohol and alcoholism is pretty much um, the addiction based on alcohol. So yes, alcohol is the number one on the list. Number two is smoking, although technically it's not to the cigarette that you become addicted but to the nicotine itself which is the 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 ingredient that the cigars have and number three is drug addiction and here i am referring again to both legal and illegal drugs those prescribed by doctors uh, as well as all those that are out there in the streets that are considered illegal drugs number four is gambling and all forms of betting and putting money in order to get a result. So gambling is number four. But listen to this one. Number five on the list is actually food addiction. And this is the moment when you might be thinking, Xiomara, food? Are we talking about the same thing? Because we all need to eat. We all need food. And that's right. But the, the food addict uses food as a way to deal with their feelings of sadness, depression, or anxiety. They eat compulsively trying to fill this huge emotional void they have inside. So yes, we have some people that are suffering from food addiction and it has been proven in different research 
um, and with scans of their brain that food does to their brain exactly the same kind of chemical reaction that cocaine does to the cocaine addict and so it goes. So food addiction is number five on the list. Number six, video games in which players assume the identity of the character in the game and they try to to avoid daily responsibilities and their everyday life simply to be running away from it by having an altered life in the game. Number seven is internet addiction. And again, this is the kind of things that you go, wow, but internet is so great. I remember 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when we didn't even have internet and oh my gosh, now everything, you just have to Google it or find it. There's, you can be so updated with the latest news and everything. You can communicate with people around the world. Look at what we're doing. Um, the whole emotional cafe, we're using the internet. So, you know, internet, it's such a great tool. Yes, but let me explain you this. There are some people that are so attached to internet that their whole life evolves around it to the point that their um, relationships are suffering, that they don't have interpersonal relationships at all in some cases. Others are constantly looking at their phones or, you know, browsing the internet and they don't interact anymore. As a matter of fact, I was just watching the other day on a TV program how they were saying that we're disconnecting from each other and we're losing that interaction that we humans used to have before. Um, even dating has become a way to do to be done through the internet. So more and more every day internet has been taking over everybody's life and if we are not aware and we don't have boundaries for ourselves it can get so overwhelming that it can just swept our life away. Number eight is sex addiction. And I'm talking about how um, the sex addict likely in constantly is engaging in risky sexual behaviors, exposing himself or herself to sexually transmitted diseases, as well as having affairs, picking prostitutes, and picking up strangers to have sex with. As, as much as the food addict, the sex addict uses sex to try to feel that emotional need they have, that void that they feel inside, and is their way to cope with anxiety and, and sadness and depression and any kind of feeling that they don't know or don't have the emotional resources to deal with, then therefore they use sex to try to hide them and simply not have to deal with it. Number nine, and this is interesting, number nine is shopping. And on this one, again, the person doesn't use any substance and yet they use um, to go shopping in order to avoid how they're feeling. And, and this is funny because I've known people and I've had assisted people that whenever they're sad, whenever a relationship is not working, whenever they didn't get that phone call they were expecting, um, even not having money, even having all their credit cards top, you know, to their highest, um, to the highest uh, amount that they could possibly use, to the highest amount of line of credit, they simply go to the store and buy. They need to buy. And it's, kind of funny because one of the people that I was assisting once told me how she was almost in tears as she was um, passing one after another credit card because they wouldn't go through and she simply had to have that specific item that she was getting when the truth was that she was very sad because she had um, she was struggling with divorce and she was having a very hard time coping with her own emotions so um, again it's one of those activities that it's part of normal life and yet we've seen some people suffering from it and number 10 you're not going to believe which number 10 is work addiction that's when we use the word workaholics and these people again are using work to try to fill their emotional void. They're trying to avoid how they're feeling. And these are people that also see their lives um, being negatively impacted and affected by the fact that they are always, always, always working. And they define themselves um, through their works rather than having the different areas of their life nurture and developing and accomplishing more. So those are the 10 most common addictions, alcohol, smoking, drugs, gambling, food, video games, internet, sex, 
shopping and work. There are other process addictions, there are other um, behavioral addictions such as um, porn. There are some people that cannot function normally because they're addicted to porn. There are some that um, they're struggling with their sports addiction, addiction, and there are other addicts that are addicts to, addicted to fantasy. And you might not understand what it is about, but these are people that are always fantasizing. They're always escaping from the real life, always dreaming and sometimes it, it's not literally sometimes it's just simply daydreaming about um, a different kind of life and the funny thing is that it doesn't matter when you try to take it to that reality or when you try to turn that fantasy into a reality immediately they just fly to the next one they just move to the next fantasy because it's just a way to avoid responsibilities with their real daily lives now Let's go to attachment number two, which is the emotional dependency to another person or what we call um, codependency. For a long time, codependency was a word that was linked to those people um, that had an addict in their family or an alcoholic in the family and they were part of that facilitating system. But now it's a more broadly associated with the behaviors of someone whose actions and thoughts always are revolving around another person or thing. So it's an emotional and behavioral condition affects the individual's ability to have a healthy relationship with someone else. And it's also known as relationship addiction because people with codependency, often they form and maintain relationships that are one-sided with people that are um, not free or emotionally destructive relationships or abusive rela relationships and codependency pretty much characterizes itself by sacrificing one personal one's personal needs in order to be meeting someone else's needs instead of mine so that's pretty much summarizing what a codependent is like. It's always putting the spotlight on the other and always trying to rescue and save and try to define themselves based on what they do for others, um, even putting their own needs aside and not taking good care of themselves. Now, some types of codependency, we can find them in different scenarios. We can find in a relationship with an addict or alcoholic, as I said, in which you're always expecting that this other person is going to stop using or drinking and you associate if they do with the fact that they love you or not when the truth is that as we saw addiction alcoholism it's a disease so therefore it has nothing to do with loving you or not it has to do with a disease and therefore they need treatment for that but the codependent is always there trying to uh, masquerade the whole situation and trying to rescue and trying to help and sometimes what they do is that they perpetuate the whole disease by creating the facilitating system that maintains the addict using or drinking another type of codependency we find it in a toxic relationship that's when we are in a relationship in which we are receiving abuse or that is destructive or we're being mistreated or we're being abandoned or ignore our needs are being ignored then therefore we maintain that relationship and sometimes what the codependent does is that they break up they they end this relationship and then they move to another one that pretty much changes the face and the name but it's the same pattern because it's a dynamic that they create. Another codependency might be to a daughter or a son. Sometimes we as parents have a hard time understanding that um, our kids have the right to make their choices. And again, this is something that I have been sharing with you a lot, that I've been struggling a lot because sometimes we wanna be able to rescue them and tell them what to do and even do it for them when the truth is that it's our, tar uh, our, ta our time to simply let go and detach and let them be. There are some codependents to a parent, um, it can be a mother or father or both, to the point that they have moved on to create their own new family and yet they're keeping that strings attached with the father or the mother or both and to the point that it affects, it negatively, negatively impact the 
mm-hmm. no relationship to the point that they are not assuming the responsibilities of the new family because they are um, putting the parents' needs ahead of their own kids or their own significant other. And another form of codependency can be to a friend. I've seen people having a hard time m- making a decision, doing something, unless this friend or other friend is there with them. So to the point that they actually feel uh, depressed if this person is not calling them or is not inviting them out or something. So again, these are different types of codependency and different types of dependency that we have to another person, to other people. Now, number three has to do with depending on money. And financial dependency, instead of um, uh, affective or emotionally, what really means is that there are some people that associate who they are and their sense of value and their happiness. It's always associated, related to the amount of money they have in their pockets. And I know that for some of you, it might be something that you, it, it's hard for you to kind of believe it. But yes, there's some people that to them, you are someone or you are important, depending on how much money you have in your pocket or how much money you have in a bank account. They define themselves based on that. And they have this um, dysfunctional mentality about money. And they nurture the idea that money is, makes you happy and that money solves all your problems it can fix everything and it's not um, uncommon to find this dysfunctional mentality towards money because if you think about it the social media and TV and movies are always promoting this image that is associated to being powerful and being happy and being important based on the kind of latest device, electronic device that you're using or what kind of clothes you're wearing or what kind of car you're driving. So therefore, these people that maybe they don't have a strong personality, they become influenced by these ideas and then that's what they try to pursue. And you know as well as I know that it's simply set to fail and be miserable their entire lives because it's never enough. So that's when it comes to money. And it's very sad because these are also people that get very disconnected from other people unless they consider these other people powerful and wealthy and rich. The attachment number four, it's the one based on dependence on external validation and recognition when we are suffering the lack self, the lack of self-esteem. You know how self-esteem is the belief, the perceptions, the ideas, the appraisal that we have of ourselves. And when we don't have self-esteem, we tend to need others to make us feel good. So we're always seeking for that validation outside. We're always going to others for them to validate us or to tell us that we're doing good or to tell us how great we did or that we're pretty or if it looks nice on us, any clothes that we're wearing. So by needing that, we're never nurturing ourselves to a point that we can assume our own validation. And some of the signs that you can actually identify if that you're suffering for low self-esteem or if you're seeing that you're seeking for someone else's validation and recognition, um, watch these specific signs of low self-esteem so you can identify them. There's this negative view of life, that life is hard, that life is never simple, that life is not easy for you. There's a perfectionist attitude that sometimes makes you probably denied or refuse to do something because you don't think you can really do it greatly the mistrust in yourself, the blaming behavior, you're always blaming circumstances or others because you just don't um, have the power by yourself to set boundaries and set limits and be able to assume your own decisions and responsibilities. There's always the fear of taking any new risk. There are feelings of being unloved or being unlovable. There are this willingness to let other people decide for you. 
there's fear of doing it wrong and there's total lack of harmony with yourself and others and total lack of continuity it's easy to just simply drop something and quit doing it because you don't think you're really going to do it great at the end so you just simply let it go so therefore the interpersonal relationships are based on the person um, need the, the this person's void and they're trying to fill it by having these other people from outside coming and telling them how to do it or how to how they did and having that validation that they need we all need validation don't get me wrong but some people are really into seeking that extreme validation external recognition and they never never validate themselves about anything or for anything they do and the final attachment that I have to share with you is when we're holding on to specific behaviors and attitudes and toxic emotions. It's funny because sometimes it's easy for us to take the attitude and say, well, this is the way I am and that's simply the way it is because I've always been like this and that's the way it is when that's not the real attitude. Um, sometimes what we're doing is that we're coping with a lot of um, anxiety, for instance, and anxiety is something that it's a, it's a total natural response sometimes when we feel threatened or we are in danger. But sometimes when we let anxiety constantly overwhelm us, we are in that fear of something that's not right and something that's going to go wrong any minute. And we don't enjoy life because we have that sense that something bad is going to happen same thing with fears you know how fears can transform our lives and block us and simply not let us move and not let us enjoy life sometimes maybe we're attached to chronic dissatisfaction that constant whining and not being able to enjoy life and always complaining about something it's just amazing i've known people that are so negative they simply the minute something happens, whatever comes out of their mouth comes out negatively. It's a whining or a complaining or something negative about the situation instead of always looking for the positive side of it. There's also anger and some people, they go um, abusing others in the name of the anger that they feel and justifying their anger and they understand that whatever they did is right because they were angry and they had the right to be angry so um and the final one that i can also identify in that kind of behavior and attitude and toxic emotion is jealousy there's some people that they are always seeking for something, looking for some information, checking the cell phone, checking on the wallet, getting the purse. They're always um, expecting that their spouse or their partner or the significant other is going to be having an affair or it's going to be um, taken off with someone else. And they are constantly creating this situation in their minds to the point that they don't enjoy the relationship they have and they don't enjoy the love of their loved ones simply because they can't because they are putting all their emphasis and energy into whatever they think is happening behind their backs. So these are behaviors and attitudes that we need to change, that we need to detach from. And if for a long time you've seen yourself struggling with this and kind of thinking that this is the way your life has to be, you can detach from those. And let's go to that part, which is usually um, the best part of the night. Uh, what I did was that I put various recommendations for each one of the attachments and then I'm going to end up with some general ones for you. But let's imagine that what you're dealing is with an addiction. Let me tell you, you can recover from an addiction. You can detach from it. And the first recommendation is going to be total abstinence from the substance or the activity. There's no negotiation. There's not half terms with that. Total abstinence is the first step to it then you are going to be needing some emotional support there's some self-help groups friends that don't use or don't practice the activity that you were addicted to because you need to have people that can actually understand you and can give you the support whenever the craving or the urging comes that you need to do or use again you need you're going to be needing to make some changes some adjustments in your life and maybe you might need some professional assistance but again, these are simple steps that will put you on the path 
of recovery. Now, if you are dealing with codependency, if your attachment is an emotional dependency to other people, I have some specific recommendations for you too. The first one is that you need to set clear boundaries with yourself. You have to keep yourself away from whatever is hurting you, from whatever is damaging you, from whatever causes you wrong. You have to. You need to identify those specific people. You need to identify that specific relationship and you need to set clear boundaries for yourself. Then you need to put energy and focus on your self-esteem. You need to start loving yourself and you need to start taking care of yourself. You too are going to be needing emotional support, some good friends that can nurture you and help you through it. Because let me tell you, when you're detaching from certain people, as much as the addict, you're going to feel the craving to call him or to call her, or to go see her, to go look for him or whatever. So you're going to need a very good emotional support group. You need to start practicing the art of acceptance. Um, you know that acceptance, um, the, the whole process of grieving goes through four stages. So in order to practice acceptance, you need to go through the different stages. You're going to feel um, that you are in shock in denial you're gonna go through anger you're gonna go through um, extreme pain and finally you're gonna get to that level of acceptance but you need to acknowledge those feelings and experience them as part of the process you need to feel those feelings try not to deny them or try not to avoid them simply cope with them and that's why you need a good support system so you have people that you can talk to um, about these things no matter what take care of your physical appearance no matter what okay as i always said no matter what keep looking good because that's going to help you a little bit to feel better but if you just let go and you don't take a shower and you're sitting on the couch and you you know you don't do your hair you don't go out you don't do anything that will add to making you feel worse Practice letting go. Practice accepting the fact that you have no control over anybody else but yourself. And sometimes you might need professional assistance. Don't hesitate. If you think you need it, go for it. Because the most important thing is your recovery. And I would recommend that you nurture your spirituality because you need to be able to feel that void that you're trying to fill with someone else in your life. You're going to need the spiritual part to feel that huge void you have inside. Now, let's say that your problem is with your dependency on money. Your recommendations are very simple too. You need to clear to, to set clear boundaries with yourself, with your expenses. Keeping track of everything you spend and you, the need to have to buy, um, you need to be able to identify this. You need to work on improving your self-esteem. You cannot base your self-esteem on money or power or the kind of things that you have. Create a financial plan, a budget, and stick to it. Follow it strictly. Don't go off that budget. And if you think you need professional assistance, go for it. There are great financial coaches. There are therapies for money dysfunctional. There are Debtors Anonymous, which is a group that works with um, all different money dysfunctionalities that we can find. So if you think you need professional assistance, there is help for you. And finally, if your dependency is on external validation and recognition, you also need to see it set clear boundaries with yourself. Whenever you find yourself seeking for that external validation, stop. Simply stop. Don't do it. Hold yourself together and move away. Don't go ask for that validation. Don't go ask what they think, how you did, and for them to tell you their opinions. Don't do it. Imagine a huge stop sign in your mind. Practice healing beliefs. I always talk about healing beliefs and affirmations and how incredibly positive is the impact that they have on us by simply saying these healing statements that are going to help you feel better about yourself. Make a list of your accomplishments, things you've ha you have achieved. It doesn't have to be huge things. It can be small accomplishments. But make that list and post it on a place that you can look at it and you can read it 
several times as often as needed okay because every time you look at that list you'll remember those are your accomplishments make a list of your positive traits the things that you find good about yourself if you have a hard time doing that ask a friend to help you but do that so you can actually connect with your traits and your virtues and, and understand that there's some good about yourself identify what you can change and what you cannot change and start making changes if you can on those you can and start trying to make peace with the fact that this you cannot change and simply learn to live with them and my final recommendation for you will be to set new goals simple goals but make an action plan that you follow through because all this will help you build more self-esteem as you go growing yourself on these recommendations if your dependency is um, your attachment to your own behavior patterns and attitudes and maybe toxic emotions i have recommendations for you too set boundaries first let's make an inventory and identify specific behaviors attitudes and emotions that you have and then set your boundaries what you're going to do when you feel like that what you're not going to allow yourself to do whenever you're feeling this or that or this emotion whenever try to keep calm it's so simple but sometimes just counting until 10 walking moving away from whatever is causing you the emotion or making you react sometimes that will help you keep calm practice relaxation and respiration practice visual visualization i always talk about the visual board and thinking ahead and trying to picture yourself in your mind acting in a different way reacting totally different to situations that you normally react in a certain with a certain behavior pattern or attitude that you want to change. Avoid whatever that can be avoided. Sometimes you have to take into consideration hormonal changes or if you're hungry or if you're tired. These are things that can um, have a negative impact on how you feel and can make you overreact. And if you need professional assistance, go get it because it's out there for you. My dear friends, I want to wrap up this session with some general common recommendations for all of these attachments, for all of them. The following are things that you can use for all of them, regardless which one is the one that you identified that it's the one causing you problems today. Number one, practice any physical activity or sport. Taking care of yourself and your body, it's going to help you feel better, look better, and be healthier. Collaborate or offer some service. That will put your own um, self aside in order to help others that maybe have um, much more needs than the ones that you have or more realistic needs that they need help with. So by servicing others, that always it's, uh, uh, has a healing effect in our own souls. Make up your mind to have a good time. You have to decide that you want to enjoy life and that you don't want to be suffering and being miserable all the time anymore. Have your support system. You need a support system. These are friends, friends that are good for you, friends that nurture your soul, friends that love you, that care about you, that you can share your feelings with, okay? Nurture your spiritual self, your spirituality, I always say, you know, I believe in something. I believe in God. I hope you believe in something because definitely we need to believe in something greater than us. That something, someone can help us. And to me, that is the spiritual self that you need to develop in yourself. To me, it's God. You need to find yours. But definitely you need to nurture your spirituality. And finally, if you need it, seek some professional assistance. There's life coach, there are therapists, there are counselors, there are people like me willing to help you and help you find the path to recover and to be totally free from all your attachments. So don't hesitate. Sometimes we have the misconception that if we seek for professional help is because we're crazy. Well, let me tell you this, we all need help. So sometimes we need professional help because these are the people that will help us objectively to understand what's going on with us and find the path to recover. So 
don't doubt it go for it if you need it well my friends that's all for tonight i hope you had a great time with this emotional cafe session as much as i did as i was putting it together for you i hope to see you next thursday with another interesting topic that we're going to be having in order to continue breaking free you know freedom is the topic for the month of may so i hope to see you next thursday have a great evening